Okay, in this video, we're going to look at using a microcontroller to control a three-phase industrial induction motor. Now, the microcontroller I'm going to use is a parallax propeller. And that's it here on the board. Now, this microcontroller is a multi-core microcontroller because it has eight 32-bit microcontrollers on board. So you could run eight separate tasks or programs independent from each other. Now, this microcontroller is going to control the speed of the three-phase motor. And it's going to do that using pulse width modulation. So it's going to send out a 3.3 volt PWM signal into the circuitry here. Now this circuitry has an opto isolator, which will change the 3.3 volt stream into a 10 volt PWM stream. And that'll be fed into a Schmidt trigger, which would square, which would square off uh, the signal. And then it's going to be fed into an RC low pass filter, which would change that PWM signal into a voltage. Now that voltage will be buffered by this emitter follower here and outputted through this, this, through this wire. So you're going to get a 0 to 10 volts output from this, from this uh, board when you feed a 0 to 255 number in through the serial port into the code. So 0 would be stop and 255 would be full speed and that would give out a 0 to 10 volts output of this, of this D-day converter. Okay, our microcontroller is going to control the speed of the three-phase motor through a variable frequency drive like we see here. Now, this one's made by Tico. So on this drive we feed it single-phase power as you can see on terminals L1 and L3 and then it will output three-phase power on terminals T1, T2, T3. So now we can control the speed of the motor through this front pot. So here you can see it's stop, stop zero and I increase the pot, you can see I'm increasing the speed of the motor. So that would be 20.41 hertz signal, three-phase signal to the motor. And as I increase it to maximum, which would be 60 hertz, that's the speed of the motor. So that would be full speed, and that will be stop all the way down to the bottom. Now we could also do this through this terminal strip. As you can see, a terminal strip labeled AVI, that's analog voltage input, so if we put a voltage from 0 volts to 10 volts into AVI, we can control the motor from, from stop to full speed, 60 hertz. So on our circuit that we saw on the parallax board, we're going to feed a voltage of 0 to 10 volts into AVI, and we'll be able to control the motor from stop to full speed. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to my little circuitry that I have built on my parallax propeller board. This is my little digital to analog converter interface circuit. So on the bottom trace, you can see the PWM stream coming from the microcontroller. And on the top trace, you can see the output voltage that's going to be fed into the variable frequency drive to control the speed of the three-phase motor. So right now, the PWM signal is very narrow. So this will be stop mode. So as I increase the PWM, you can see the voltage, the DAC voltage output increasing. And that's going to be fed into the, into the variable uh, frequency drive to control the speed of the motor. So right there would be maximum speed, and we could take it down again to minimum speed, and that would be stop. So we have total control. We have 256 steps of speed that we can control the variable uh, frequency drive to control the speed of the three-phase motor by using pulse width modulation. Okay, I have my breadboard circuit hooked up to my variable frequency drive. I have it hooked up to the AV input, as you can see there. So now I, I can control the speed of the three-phase motor by sending a 0 to 10 volt signal into the variable frequency drive. And you can see the pot no longer controls the speed, so I have it configured for the AV input to control the speed. So if I give it a signal on my keyboard, you can see the speed increasing. So I'm sending a signal, I'm putting a value from 0 to 255 through the serial port into my code, and that activates the speed. So I could go up, and I could go down, all the way down to stop. So I have total control over my three-phase motor by my microcontroller. Okay, on the right-hand side, I have the PWM values that I'm feeding into the microcontroller through the serial port. And on the left, you can see the variable frequency drive uh, frequency uh, speed. So if I increase 
my PWM value on the right, you can see it's affecting the speed on the left. So that's my code that I'm entering into the to my controller that controls the speed of the of the three phase motor. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on the breadboard on the propeller activity board, which is basically a digital to analog converter which uses pulse width modulation. Now if we look at the input, we can see the 3.3 volt PWM stream coming from the microcontroller on pin 1. That's fed into an opto isolator. Now the output of the opto isolator is fed into an NPN transistor and the signal on the collector of that NPN transistor would be 10 volts PWM stream. And that's fed into the 74C914 Schmidt trigger inverter which squares up the signal. Now the output of the inverter can sink and source current which we need to drive the RC low pass filter. Now the output of the low pass filter it's a voltage and that's fed into a emitter follower it's a buffer a high impedance buffer so the input impedance at the base is high it's a, it's a gain of the transistor times the emitter resistor. Now the output of this emitter follower at the emitter is low impedance and that's a voltage from 0 to 10 volts, which feeds the voltage frequency drive, which controls the speed of the motor. Okay, I just want to talk about designing RC low-pass filters for PWM circuits, like the one we saw. So here's a schematic of a low-pass filter, an RC filter, with a PWM input and a DC voltage output. Now this will be the frequency response of that circuit, and FC is our corner frequency, that's our 3 dB down point on our curve. And there's a formula for calculating the corner frequency. Now when you design a digital analog converter using pulse width modulation, you have to design the corner frequency of your RC filter to be the less than one-tenth of your PWM frequency. So in my case, my PWM frequency was 7.6 kilohertz. So my corner frequency has to be 760 hertz or lower. Now the lower you go, the slower the response will be from the filter, but the cleaner the output voltage will be. So I picked my corner frequency to be 13 hertz, which, which gave a very clean output voltage. The response would be slower, but it wasn't an issue in my case. So I hope this video gives you some ideas how to build your own digital analog converter using pulse width modulation, not only to control a motor, but to control any voltage controlled device.